hopefully you guys can hear me uh, over this engine here. Um, up here should be running pretty smooth. It's got a little tick in there. I don't know if that's some valve noise or not or something. But uh, I get this funny blow off valve sound, kind of. Accelerate to get hit it real hard. Do it Doesn't do it too much. But if uh, you accelerate real fast, um, that's what it sounds like right now. Like I said, we're gonna replace the oxygen sensors and uh, reset the codes, take it for a spin, see what happens. Uh, the codes I've been getting, um, I'll put down at the, uh, at the bottom. Uh, you know, I got a general misfire code, got a cylinder three misfire code, and then I got bank one uh, running mean codes. I think it's uh, P2171 and P2195. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one out of the way. All right, so here we are on the other side of the free star. And here is, let's see if I can get a sight on it for you guys. Ah. So here is my exhaust pipe for bank one. And if you come over here, you can just see that guy up there. Hopefully I can get my wrench up in between that frame member and the engine there. Let's see if it'll focus, come on. Nope, it didn't like to focus. I don't know, you get the picture. Wiring harness goes right up there, which I think is going to be a pain in the butt to get to. I think that may be the worst thing. I wonder if I can come in from the top. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. Anyway, so there's that one. We follow this around the other one. So it's right perfectly there. Right on the back of the cat. So that'll be easy to get to at least. All right, let's get him taken off, see what we can figure out. All right, so I got this downstream oxygen sensor out, and this looks like a really new plug. So I'm afraid this maybe was one of the ones that has been replaced already. I don't know, I may hook it up to my multimeter later and see what kind of diagnostics I can do for it. But, you know, I don't have a lot of free time, so probably won't. I've got the part, so I'll just replace it. Um, this is a Bosch uh, 15717. Downstream uh, oxygen sensor from, oh, there, there's the English side, uh, from AutoZone. Uh, it was like 48 bucks or something. Um, looks a little bit different, but it says it's the right part number. So we'll hook her up and see if she screws in. One thing to, uh, Double check on these to make sure you do put some grease on here. This one came pre-lubed, um, so it's got some some grease on there to <clears throat> keep this from oxidizing to the catalytic converter. Um, you really don't want to try to bust one of these out when it's rusted on there. It just becomes a permanent part of the vehicle, and you have to replace the whole assembly. So just make sure you put some grease on there if there's not some there already. I'm gonna put a little dab of uh, dielectric grease on this little connector here as well. Uh, I'm just gonna help protect it against the elements a little further. Little plastic plug there where it plugs into the wiring harness uh, is a little busted up. Um, the clip still works, but it's uh, kind of hopefully not letting some water ingress. But uh, we'll put this on there to help insulate it anyway. Um, it's a general good practice on electrical connections while you're at it. I did notice uh, on the old auction sensor when I pulled it out. Uh, in the wiring harness, there's like a, a plastic sheath that goes around it, and when I unplugged that and kind of let it down, there was some water in there. Um, those wires are sealed up and you know insulated, so that water shouldn't be causing any shorts. But uh, I am going to zip tie it up here where uh, it hopefully can't get uh, any more water in it as well. All right, so that upper, uh, that upstream O2 sensor is a bear to get to. Um, I can get the the uh, O2 sensor wrench on it from the bottom. Uh, it was rusted in place, so I had to put a cheater bar on it. I took a, uh, a wrench like so, yeah. and just kind of wrapped around the end here. Had to wedge it so it was right. Pull. They gave me a cheater bar. Um, I was able to break it free. 
But of course, with all the rust, I could only in the in the in the narrow space, I could only turn it about uh, oh, a sixteenth of a turn or so, like just enough to break it free. And then you can't get the wrench around to make another turn. Um, I was able to, as you can see, take off the airbox and reach down in here. You can see it. Get to it. I don't know if you'll be able to see where we're at in here. Um, yeah, there it is. It's over there. Um, the plug was easier to get to to unplug from up here. I unplugged it. I got the wrench in there and turned it another, I don't know, eighth of a turn or so. Now I'm going to crawl back under and see if uh, I can turn it another eighth or so and just rinse and repeat until I can get it. Hopefully the new one will go in a little bit easier. Victory! There's a piece of shit as she is. Uh, I found it easier to stand on my lovely stool here, come in this way, up to about my waist, reach my arm down in there, where I could just barely get a finger on it, and reach down there and unscrew it. I don't know, it's down here somewhere. I don't know. Anyways, coming in from the top appeared to be the way to go. I'm trying to get it in from the bottom at least uh, to screw it in. And uh, I'll probably have to come back in from the top to, to hook the connector. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And again, here's a comparison of the two. Uh, one on the left is the new Bosch. Plug appears to be the same. This one actually is dead nuts on for how it looks. I did finally get the other one screwed in. It was kind of a pain in the butt to get the, the thread started. I had to crawl in and out from under the van a couple of times and cuss at it good and proper before it did what I wanted it to do, as all good old vehicles do. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's the new one on the left. All right, I got her. Nothing works till you cuss her good and proper. All right, so, is that it? Yeah, I think that little, that little light plug over there is Action sensor, plug, oh, no, a little farther, there we go. Yeah, that guy right there. Uh, the action sensor plug, it's free, I don't know where that's supposed to plug into, I don't care. I wrapped it behind that uh, hydraulic line there so it can stay off the engine heat. There is our newly replaced action sensor, I think you can see it. The torque spec on that is, <laughs> click. Whatever you can get, because you're not going to be able to get anything in there to turn it adequately to uh, measure anything. So just get your wrench on it and see if you can turn it at all. Uh, I was able to get it in from the bottom uh, to finger tight with much negotiation and swearing. Um, and then uh, naturally the wrench only being a six point didn't fit on it from the bottom. So I had to come up around the top again, reach in and uh, was able to get it on there and upon applying pressure it wouldn't turn you know hardly at all so basically i just torqued it down just pushed on it appears to be cl uh, clipped in there hooked up i'm gonna reset the codes here and uh start it let it idle for a little bit we'll take it for a spin um to reset the codes reset the computer i'm gonna unhook a negative battery terminal over there and um, you get a jumper and just touch it to the positive battery terminal. Uh, that will uh, deplete the charge and all the capacitors, reset the computer. Um, I think they say you should leave it for five minutes or just unhook the battery, leave it unhooked for five minutes and it'll discharge the capacitors. Um, I've had good luck just jumping it. Um, don't touch the negative battery terminal while you're doing that, that'll short your, everything out. Just the, um, this guy, when it's off, hook it up to this guy. All right, so here's what I was talking about, about shorting out the capacitors. You can see I've got this hooked up here. This is the battery terminal, cable attachment. You take that off. Got uh, these little alligator clips that I'd soldered to another wire um, for another project that I had. We just hook it up the positive and negative. That shorts out all the capacitors, discharges them. Like I said, make sure you don't touch this guy because you'll basically weld that all together. Uh, as a side note, when you're putting this airbox back on these uh, Freestars, there's a little vacuum guy right here. I don't know if you can see it with the sun coming in. 
Uh, back there. Make sure that guy gets put back in. Uh, that your breather tube goes back to your yeah, the rear bank uh, valve cover. Uh, make sure you put that in there. That's going to be a pretty big vacuum leak there. So here we are in uh, the AutoZone parking lot, having a 12 hour shift at work. I uh, went ahead and replaced the spark plug. As you can see, this one, even with only 800 miles on it, is pretty crapped out. It's got a lot of oil on it, a bunch of junk. I'm afraid that probably means I need valve uh, seals. At any rate, uh, that didn't fix it. Still had a really bad misfire on cylinder three. Uh, since I was here, I went ahead and pulled the coil pack, ran inside, and swapped it on the warranty, and uh, now she is uh, running without misfire. So we'll keep trucking until the next thing goes wrong. Until next time, I'm out. So here we are on the highway. Uh, the next morning uh, appears to still be running really well. I'll get a misfire, full strong. 